Newly released video gives us an update on the recovery of a National Guard soldier badly injured in Lexington more than a year ago. His message to the community. A good Samaritan says two people he was trying to help in Whitley County actually wanted to rob him. Here why a woman was arrested just moments after she was trying to bond one of her family members out of jail. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good evening to you. Right now, police are looking for two inmates. They say walked away from the Blackburn Correctional Complex in Lexington earlier tonight. Police say 24-year-old Jordan Green and 23-year-old Waltez Franklin were reported missing just after 8 tonight. Green is serving a 28-year sentence for robbery and burglary convictions out of Boone and Kenton counties. Franklin is serving a 20-year sentence for robbery and assault convictions out of Warren County. Lexington police and state police have searched the area around Blackburn tonight, but they have not found any sign of the two men. Both men had more than a year to go before being eligible for parole. Keep checking WKYT.com and the WKYT News app for updates on this story. He lost his leg after what Lexington police called a hit and run crash. But tonight, more than a year later, a Guam National Guard soldier is learning how to walk again. Police say Noel Espino was hit by an SUV outside a bar on Euclid Avenue. They say the driver, a former Lexington firefighter, didn't stop. Just before Christmas, Espino thanked everyone who has helped during his recovery. Garrett Weimer is at the live desk with the update in our top story at 11. Garrett. It was a night that turned into a nightmare for Noel Espino back in September 2014. Now, a newspaper in Guam reports that the guardman's, guardsman is in Texas, recovering and adjusting to life with a prosthetic leg. It's been a long road, but video shows Noel Espino slowly taking some steps with his prosthetic leg. From Fort Sam Houston, I am Captain Noel Espino here with my lovely wife, Rose. We last heard from Espino back in September, the trial for ex-Lexington firefighter Jared McCargo. McCargo was convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison for hitting Espino outside the beer trap on Euclid Avenue. Guam's Pacific Daily News reports Espino is in San Antonio, Texas, going through therapy and working with his prosthetic leg. In a video on their page from the Guam National Guard, Espino and his wife shared a special holiday message of thanks. We want to thank you for all the prayers, the support, and kindness you have given me and my family. And from the bottom of our hearts, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and, and a, a Happy, Happy New Year. Year. God bless. The Pacific Daily News reports that a commander in the Guam National Guard recently visited Espino in San Antonio and that the guardsman is in, quote, great spirits. At the live desk, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you. Investigators say McCargo was drunk the night he hit Espino. Commonwealth's attorney Ray Larson said in a post on his Facebook page that McCargo is eligible for parole in two years. New tonight, Lexington police have arrested a man they say fired shots into a home. It happened about 6.30 tonight along at Cato Lake Court near Buckhorn Drive. Police say it started as a domestic situation. Then a man fired shots into the home before driving off. They say his ex-girlfriend was inside the home. No one was injured. Police say the man is now facing wanton endangerment charges. His name has not been released. Some of us saw snow at times today, and now we're in for a cold winter night. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at that forecast. Hey, Chris. Hey, Sam. Amber, we are dealing with a very cold evening out there that is wrapping up after some snow showers and flurries right on cue. Blanketed parts of the region today, albeit briefly blanketing sections of central and eastern Kentucky. Defender radar network, any flakes that are out there now going by the wayside, though, leaving behind... Quite a bit of snow in localized areas. Check this out out of southeastern Kentucky, Harlan County, WKYT weather watcher Kyle Howard down here showing snow covering parts of Harlan County. Jordan Montgomery over into Pikeville a little earlier today with snow 
blanketing parts of far southeastern Kentucky on the tune of a local half to one inch into the southeastern corner of the state. Look at the numbers now. 24 degrees here in Lexington, 27, Mount Sterling and Moorhead. Oh, just a 15 degree wind chill right now, and it may drop into the high single digits at times into parts of the area as we go into the first half of tomorrow morning. So as we look ahead, we've got a lot of winter that is showing up on the way with that seven day forecast when I come back in just a little bit. Believe it or not, guys, it does get colder as we go through the upcoming weekend, especially. A grand jury will now hear the case of a man accused of killing five people, including an unborn child in a Clay County crash. A judge made that decision today during a hearing for Jason Gibson. Police charged Gibson with four counts of murder and fetal homicide. On December 18th, police say he was under the influence of drugs when his car crashed into another car on the Hal Rogers Parkway. Judy Pennington Adams, her pregnant granddaughter Tiffany, Tiffany's young son Kyson, and family friend Charlene Lewis all died in the crash. Family members of the victims say they want justice in the case. If you're going to get a high, don't get in a vehicle. I mean, that's just it. Do not take the chance on going and killing somebody. Gibson was the only survivor of that crash. New tonight, a man talks about being nearly robbed by two people he says he was just trying to help. Michael Utley says Saturday night, a man came up to him at a Whitley County gas station, said he was homeless and needed a ride. Utley says he took that man and the man's girlfriend to a home in Woodbine, but that's where Utley says the man pulled out a gun and tried to rob him. And the next thing I know, he stepped around the front of the vehicle and he's got a gun in his side, and he said he, was, he wanted my wallet and the car. He looked down for a second. When he looked back up, I hit him with everything I had. I mean, I was scared for my life. Ali says he was able to get away. The Whitley County Sheriff's Office later arrested the couple, Wayne Hoskins and Crystal Edwards, and charged them with robbery. A man charged with one of the two murders in Lexington over the holiday weekend says he's not guilty. 25-year-old Donald Roark Jr. appeared in court today. Lexington police say he shot 28-year-old Corinne's White early yesterday morning outside an apartment complex on Red Mile Road. White's family members say he knew the suspect and they say he'll be missed. To realize that I'm not going to see him, it's, it's hard because Corey had a very good heart. And he was a very sweet person, and he did not deserve this. As for the other murder case, Lexington police say 28 year old Joseph McDowell was shot on Roosevelt Boulevard on New Year's Day. They have not made any arrests in that case. She showed up at a Southern Kentucky jail to bail out a family member. The problem, police say a Laurel County woman was drunk. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office arrested 50 year old Kimberly Wilder last night in the parking lot of the county jail. New at 11, Monique Blair talks to investigators about this unusual arrest. Laurel County Sheriff's deputies say late Sunday evening, 50-year-old Kimberly Wilder was here at the Laurel County Detention Center trying to bond one of her family members out of jail. But she, too, landed herself behind bars. She appeared to be intoxicated. Jail employees called the sheriff's office next door, and once deputies came to the jail parking lot, they found Wilder sitting in the passenger side of a car. And she had a beer in her hand, and the deputy conducted an investigation and determined that she was under the influence. Wilder was arrested and charged with possession of an open alcoholic beverage container in a motor vehicle and alcohol intoxication in a public place. This is a total disregard for, for rules and regulations and the law. I mean, she needed to be put in jail. Wilder was released from the Laurel County Detention Center shortly after 5 o'clock Monday evening. Laurel County Sheriff Deputy Gilbert Achardo says although behavior such as Wilder's doesn't happen all the time at the jail, this is not the first time they've arrested someone who was under the influence while trying to bail someone out of jail. People that are intoxicated do crazy things. I, I think that's just a commentary for what's happened here. Uh, people that are under the influence do crazy things. In Laurel County, Monique Blair, WKYT. And as for the person Wilder was trying to bond out of jail, deputies are not sure if that person is still in jail tonight. Tonight, a standoff between law enforcement and armed protesters at a federal building in Oregon continues. The police have not made a move to retake that building, but tonight a sheriff said it's time for the protesters to go. Jennifer Dowling has the latest. The group that seized this National Wildlife Refuge in Eastern Oregon gave itself a name today. Citizens for Constitutional Freedom. 
Their leader, Amon Bundy, and other protesters began their armed occupation Saturday following a march to protest the reincarceration of two ranchers, 73 year old Dwight Hammond and 46 year old Stephen Hammond. We have a lot of work to be able to unwind the unconstitutional land transactions that have taken place here. The Hammonds checked themselves back into prison Monday after a federal judge ordered they had not served the five year federal minimum for a fire on their property that spread to government land. They were convicted under an anti terrorism law. My uncle and my cousin are the farthest thing from domestic terrorists. The Hammond family has distanced itself from the protests. Monday night, the local sheriff had a message for the occupiers. The Hammonds have turned themselves in. It's time for you to leave our community. But protesters say the occupation is bigger than the Hammonds. They say the federal government has been persecuting landowners here in the West for decades. Get out of here, you coward! Ammon Bundy's father, Cliven, was involved in a dispute over grazing rights on federal land in Nevada in 2014 that turned violent. Ammon Bundy says he has no intention of using violence against the police, but he's asking others to join his cause. Jennifer Dowling for CBS News, Burns, Oregon. The FBI says it's keeping an eye on the situation, and the White House says the president is aware of it. New tonight, the parents of a missing Nelson County mother have filed a new court motion in the case. According to WDRB-TV in Louisville, Crystal Rogers' parents are trying to keep their grandchild from leaving the state. They have custody of four of Rogers' children, but the fifth is with Brooks Houck, who is Rogers' boyfriend and the father of that child. The Nelson County Sheriff's Office has named Houck as a suspect in Rogers' disappearance, but so far he's not been charged. Her parents claim Houck is trying to leave the state with the child so that they filed the motion. Rogers disappeared in July. Tonight, Lexington police are trying to track down the thieves who broke into cars in the neighborhood. Some people along Highland Drive near East Loudon said their cars were broken into over the weekend. One woman says her car was ransacked. Took an iPad, took a TV, took my daughter's iPhone, money, ammo. We had bullets and stuff in there. Well, the dash, they tore all the sides of it up really bad. Another victim says the thieves stole a special wooden box out of her car that they had a family member make for her husband's ashes, but fortunately the ashes were not in that box. His Christmas light display became an attraction, but a Lexington man also used it to help those less fortunate. Matthew Smith collected canned food donations from people who stopped by his home on Mount McKinley Way to see the lights. Well, today he says he took all of those donations, 552 pounds worth, to God's pantry. How about yeah. that? A lot of good folks stopping by and dropping those off during Christmas.